Hi, uh, welcome to this module. In this module, we will look at 3D printing. Now, 3D printing is uh, a part of additional manufacturing or additive manufacturing, not additional manufacturing, additive manufacturing. And the importance of 3D printing is, is enormous, all right. We will see the theory and we will also see an, uh, a video that is recorded by us in, in my lab uh, on how to use a 3D printer. Hmm? And we can, we can design a casing when you talk about the electronic uh, signal conditioning circuit uh, for EEG and you can also design and fabricate electrodes for capturing or acquiring EEG signals. Those electrodes would be metal electrodes and if you want to print metal, you require 3D metal printing, right. So, let us see what exactly 3D printing is and we will take it over. So, if you see the slide, the 3D printing is also known as additive manufacturing process. Why additive? Because it will add the layers to the uh, substrate, while there is another uh, machining technique called subtractive machining technique, where the uh, material is removed by physical or chemical processing. So, process of making 3 dimensional which is 3D solid objects from a digital file uh, is used in 3D printing is a part of additive manufacturing process and that is why uh, the desired object is created by laying down successive layers, layer by layer, uh, one layer, second layer, third layer on it and then you create a structure. Of course, there is no gap in the layers, just uh, it was my just uh, drawing mistake, but you see one layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and you can see that slowly the uh, material is adding to the base material. That is why the structure is created, okay. This is the uh, way the layers are created. Each of these layers can be seen as finely sliced horizontal cross section. So, if you want to make a box, right, uh, and then this box can be made by, uh, by stacking several layers. So, it is like a slicing of the uh, layers that are attached together to for formulate or to form this particular box that is what it means. Uh, 3D printing is opposite to subtractive manufacturing. We can see here this is example of subtractive manufacturing which can be uh, you, you have seen the machining like uh, milling or turning, grinding, water jet cutting these are all subtractive manufacturing, right. Uh, uh, so, the 3D printing uh, examples for subtractive manufacturing of course, are the uh, uh, how the milling machine uh, while the 3D printing enables us to produce complex functional shapes using less material than traditional manufacturing methods. So, what you have seen in the video is the how the 3D printing kind of works. So, let us see the slide now. What are the workflow of 3D printing? If you see the slide, you will be able to see that. Uh, first is you have to you can scan. So, 3D scanning can be done either by scanning you can generate a STL file. This STL file is used finally, for the printing purpose or you design your own model using CAD okay. or you can do photo scanning. You take a photo and you can send it uh, uh, make a STL file. So, this is a digital model of the object 3D scanning CAD or photo scanning you prepare STL file and then the, there is a slicing and layer printing, okay. So, slicing, what is slicing? The from 3D model to 3D printer, slicing uh, a 3D model into, into uh, in order to make a 3D printable uh, uh, version, we need to slice the model and it is divided into hundreds of thousands of horizontal layer. So, suppose this is what we want to print, right, then it is first slice in many, many, many parts and then it, it goes on slicing and then this part slice by slice this part is made to recreate your object as you are desiring, which is the slicing process. Uh, 3D model is sliced and fed to a 3D printer. This can be done via USB, it can be done via SD card or Wi Fi. And when the file is uploaded in 3D printer, the object is ready to 3D print layer by layer. So, there are several modeling software available 
uh, that can be used uh, based on the uh, application or function uh, of the user industries. Uh, there are software applications on the market that cater uh, to a broad range of industries example for aerospace, for transportation, electronics device packaging, 3D printed sensor technology and many others. And you can see here several software available right from Blender to Sketchview to SolidWorks, Fusion, Inventor, Maya, AutoCAD and many uh, till you go to uh, uh, 20 which is on chip uh, software. And you can see that uh, uh, there are several things uh, based on the general score like social website, forum, YouTube models, Google and based on that the uh, score that is given uh, to Blender is, is highest compared to other. However, uh, we, can, we can take any, any one from first 7 if you want to start working on 3D printing. We will show you to you how to, how to use the 3D printer as I said. And then what we have, we can use several materials for printing. It can be plastic, it can be metals. So, metal 3D printer is separate uh, uh, than the plastic 3D printer. When you talk about plastic, we can use uh, PETG, we can use nylon, then you can use thermoplastic, you can use ABS, you can also use resin, you can use uh, ASA. PEI, PLA and so forth. Finally, uh, if you want to go for metal, it can be nickel alloy, stainless steel, aluminum, cobalt, chrome and titanium. So, these are 3D printing materials that are used. You can, you can uh, uh, print several objects as you can see here in this slide. If you want to go for polylactic acid material, you see the objects printed using PLA material is uh, this is uh, used for low cost non functional prototype uh, offers greater details than ABS, but is more brittle unsuitable for high temperature applications. So, again depending on the applications that you want to uh, use for you have to change the materials. If you want to go for ABS right then you can use it uh, because it, it can give you a good mechanical properties with excellent impact strength. So, you can make a Lego bricks. Uh, but less defined details ok. So, it is better than PLA, but in terms of like the minute details uh, it is not as, as, as great as PLA. And generally it is used for enclosures, while nylon uh, can be used even for gears and uh, is a substitute functional injection molded parts, good chemical resistance, perfect for uh, functional applications like thermoplastic with excellent mechanical properties, high chemical and abrasion resistance. Thus, the nylon can be used as uh, uh, a material for several applications. If we talk about resins and PETG and TPU, then you can see here that the high details and smooth surface injection mold like prototyping, we can use uh, resin. Resins are thermoset photomers that solidifies when exposed to light producing high detail parts with a smooth injection mold. When you talk about PETG, uh, PETG is used because it has a good mechanical parts for, for, for particularly when you want to design a mechanical part PETG is a better material. Uh, it has a high impact resistance with flexibility. And uh, uh, if you want to go for TPU, then TPUs are generally uh, we can print tires using this material. It's rubber like material suitable for tubes, grips, seals and uh, is a thermoplastic elastomer again uh, with a low shore hardness and rubber like feel that can be easily flexed and compressed. So, like I said you can ch the, the choice of material depends on the application. Few more materials are there which are ASA, PEI and plastic where the plastic filament with filings or fillings are used uh, for, the, uh, for, for several applications like you want to fill uh, can be wood, metal, filament or carbon fiber, where if you want to use PEI, you can use it for honeycomb structure, this is a, just an example right. So, it can be used for engineering plastic, high performance applications, flame retardant, uh, retardant uh, PEI is an engineering thermoplastic with good mechanical properties. It can also resist heat, chemical and flame. 
uh, while if you talk about ASA it is a UV stability uh, and high chemical resistance preferred material for the outdoor applications and ASA is similar to thermoplastic uh, with the properties uh, to ABS, but with the improved thermal chemical and weather resistance. So, perfect for outdoor applications. So, anything like you can see here uh, a power cord uh, or connection can be can be can be fabricated or can be printed using 3D printing technique. When you want to go for engineering kind of solutions, a complex solution, you can go for PEI, where you want to use for filing, uh, the you can go for plastic filaments. Then we have metals. So, we have stainless steel, we can design or print fork, we can design and print knife and spoon. While the importance of stainless steel, everybody knows, however, just to uh, for the sake of finishing this particular uh, 3D printing stainless steel part, let me read it. So, you already know stainless steel has high sensile strength, temperature and corrosion resistance, is a metal alloy with high ductility, wear and corrosion resistance that can be easily welded, machined and polished. Right? So, stainless steel as we all know is extremely useful, but it is heavy material compared to aluminum. And aluminum has a high mechanicality and ductility, good strength to weight ratio. Aluminum is a metal with good strength to weight ratio, high thermal and electrical conductivity, low density and natural weather resistance. However, we need to understand that aluminum will get aluminum oxide, and uh, uh, and compared to steel, it is not, uh, uh, it doesn't have that great mechanical strength. Uh, however, the weight is extremely uh, less compared to steel, and that's why it is preferred. Uh, also, if you see cobalt chrome, then it is used for teeth crown. Okay. Uh, so, super alloy used in extreme environments, aerospace, biomedical applications, generally cobalt chrome is used. Uh, uh, it, can, it can withstand uh, corrosion, wear and temperature resistance. Titanium and nickel alloy. Titanium is used from long, long time, is used in medical industries, if it can be used for implants, it can is a excellent high strength to weight ratio, uh, uh, is low thermal expansion, high corrosion resistance and it is biocompatible. So, generally uh, the blades are used or the implants are used are made up of titanium. Nickel alloy at the another uh, side. Uh, is used in extreme environments, aerospace applications and have an excellent strength and fatigue resistance. The uh, it can be used permanently at temperatures above 600 degrees centigrade that is uh, at a very high temperature we can use nickel alloy. So, these are some of the uh, materials that are used in 3D printing. Now, we should understand what are the techniques used in 3D printing and uh, the, there are three techniques generally uh, uh, which are extremely used. First is called fused deposition modeling, then we have stereolithography uh, or digital light processing and finally, we have selective laser sintering. So, in uh, FDM uh, it is most widely used study printing process, uh, mainly it is used for creating a low cost prototypes and uh, uh, just to quickly know the, uh, whether the designs are correct. So, verify the designs. While the SLA which is stereolithography based uh, technique is most suitable for visual applications, where an injection mold like smooth surface finish and a high level of features are required. While SLS uh, which is called selective laser sintering is used for both prototyping and small batch production of functional plastic parts with good mechanical properties. If you talk about uh, the, the technologies, then also let us see the techniques involved in fabrication of 3D component. So, if you see the slide, we have three different techniques, material jetting, binder jetting and direct metal laser sintering. So, in material jetting, the material jetting produce parts of highest dimensional accuracy and you can see here, uh, there is a blower which will blow and, and uh, dry the material. There is a heater on which the, uh, the, the, the material is uh, printed using the printed head and there is a positional belt, so it can move in either direction and there is an optical feedback sensor for understanding the position. So, uh, it is used for, for producing parts of highest dimensional accuracy with very smooth surface finish used for both visual prototypes and tool manufacturing. While in case of uh, direct measure laser sintering, uh, it is used for metal 3D printing uh, generally in aerospace industry and automotive as well as medical. And in this case, 
as you can see there is a uh, powder metal dispenser platform then we have a powder dispenser piston uh, we have recoater arm metal powder supply and the laser is focused through the lens onto the powder bed where the material is sintered and uh, it can be we can we can move it with the help of xy scanning mirror the we can we can position the laser at that particular part so there is a build platform and there is a build piston while there is a powder dispersion piston so this is the details about it which we are right now not interested in because our interest is how can we use the 3d printing for eeg kind of application or for uh, for uh, for the casing of the electronic modules Finally, we have binder jetting which is most commonly used for full color parts, low cost metal printing and large sand casting molds. But the real application of 3D printing will be in sensors, will also be in casing the electronic modules and you can here see that we can directly use 3D printing for fabricating sensors. For example, if you want to uh, print uh, carbon, carbon uh, based ink, then you can create uh, a resistor for example. If I, if I uh, move my 3D printer such as I can print the carbon, right, carbon ink, then what I have? I have this resistance. Now, if I apply a voltage, then this will heat and that is why it becomes a heater, right. Same thing, we, we can create a interdigitated electrodes, you see like this, you can print like this. And if I measure impedance, if I, if I put a tissue on this, then I can measure different impedance of the value of the tissue. So, you, there are several application of this 3D printing uh, particularly when it comes to sensor design. We recently people have also have started uh, creating uh, uh, pressure sensors right and also for hum to creating hum human errors, uh, human ears. So, human ear is uh, by printing the tissues right and it is a very complex uh, process right now we will not go into details of how the uh, printing is done for creating biological tissues. But, but yes, one of the application is for printing biological tissues. Then we uh, have also uh, uh, seen the application of 3D print printing in micropillar structures for haptic. So, to convert the force into haptic is very important to, the, to get the feel, uh, the filling when, when you operate an equipment, uh, the filling of touch like for filling of how much pressure you are applying to a system this can this is called haptics ok. So, the haptics can be uh, uh, can be integrated if uh, you have a tactile sensor or a force sensor that can be printed using 3D printer. So, this force sensors or tactile sensors can be printed again with the help of uh, 3D printing uh, materials or, or techniques. Now, even the recording electrodes can be uh, printed and that is our idea EEG recording electrodes while uh, there is a electrode cap you can see here and uh, there is a wire connection pad uh, it is it is uh, uh, tested on the fish uh, and same thing you can create the electrodes with spike with the metal printing you can see here also right. So, top side showing 4 mm snap connectors uh, while this one is showing the fingers penetrating the hair. So, uh, this is kind of dry electrodes that we can print with the help of 3D metal printing all right. So, there are ways like I said the application as, as I was talking about you these are the EEG electrodes recording electrodes and this is the electronics uh, that are used to uh, uh, process the EEG data. Now, you want to cover everything in one box then you can print this particular 3D printed casing right and you can cover it this three electrodes you can place it on the scalp to record the EEG signal.